Hi, everybody. Mrs. Prusak here to read a book with you today. I know sometimes people don't think that music should use books, but music has so many amazing books that we can use in the classroom to go with instruments and different things. And I'm going to read you one of my all-time favorite books ever, and it is called dun, 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 The Remarkable Farkle McBride. It's a fun book and it has a little bit of surprise at the end. So I hope you enjoy it. Let's see if you can see this, okay? Oh, pity the prodigy, Farkle McBride. No matter what instrument poor Farkle tried, whether strumming or blowing or drumming or bowing, his musical passions were unsatisfied. When Farkle McBride was a three-year-old tyke, all freckly, bony, and thin, he astonished his friends and his family alike by playing superb violin. See, he's up there playing the violin. He went riddly, diddly, diddly, dee with all of the strings at his side. Riddly, diddly, diddly, dee, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But when he was four, Farkle played it no more, in spite of his parents' beseeching. He shattered the records he used to adore. He smashed up his rosin, and ripped up every score. He threw his fiddle and bow to the living room floor as he shouted, Enough of your screeching! What do you notice happened to his violin? Is it all busted? Oh no, his violin's all busted. When Farkle was five, his melodical gift once again bore rhapsodical fruit. The woodwinds inspired his spirits to lift, and he rapidly mastered the flute. He went rudely, tootily, tootily, too, with all of the winds at his side. Rudely, tootily, tootily, too, the remarkable Farkle McBride. Where's his flute? Is it in the bottom of the lake? Next to the fish? Oh my goodness. But at six, Farkle flung his flute into the lake. Notwithstanding its lyrical trill, he stamped on the dock till you'd think it would break. That's it, he exclaimed. I've had all I can take. That tootling gives me a brutal headache. It's so wimpy and whiny and shrill. When Farkle was seven, a different sound rekindled his musical flame. He became the most expert trombonist around, and the boulevards buzzed with his name. He went vroom, petty doom, petty doom, petty doom, with all of the brass at his side. Vroom, petty doom, petty doom, petty doom, the remarkable Farkle McBride. But at eight, he declared to his parents' despair, and as everyone else might have guessed, I can't stand the trombone with its blat and its blare. That racket is more than my eardrums can bear. So return it or throw it away. I don't care. I despise it just like all the rest. And where's his trombone? It's in the trash can. Oh my goodness. Threw it in the trash can. When Farkle was nine, both his father and mum were bursting with pride and affection. For Farkle learned xylophone, cymbals, and drum, the entire percussion section. He went boom, bash, clam a clash. All the clamor that he could provide. Tingly, bing bong, bumpity crash, the remarkable Farkle McBride. Uh-oh, look at his face there. I don't think he looks too happy. But soon he fell prey to his usual gloom, despite all the praise and the flattery. First a sigh, then a sulk, then a frown, frown, then a fume, then an ear-splitting tantrum that emptied the room. I can't take it, he bellowed. 
the crash and the boom and the clang and the bang of the battery. I don't think he's liking those symbols anymore, huh? Poor Fargo at 10, howsoever renowned, reached the end of his musical tether. But then he discovered his favorite sound, musicians all playing together. It happened like this. The conductor caught cold on the day of a major recital. You've got to replace him, young Fargo was told. Your cooperation is vital. So he took the baton and gave the downbeat, and kaboom, the foundations were shaken. By glorious music, bombastic and sweet, that filled up the hall and spilled into the street. Music that brought the whole crowd to its feet from the instruments he had forsaken. They went riddly, rudely, boom, petty bang. Bravo, all the spectators cried. Diddly doodly doom petty cling, the remarkable Farco McBride. He has a baton in his hand for that page, huh? This is the best part, my favorite part. Since that sparkly night, Maestro Farco McBride conducts all the instruments he ever tried. His happy heart sings to brass, drums, winds and strings and remarkable farkles at last what do you think is going to be behind that curtain satisfied so why is he satisfied he gets to conduct the whole orchestra yay that's one of mrs prusak's favorite books the remarkable farkle mcbride I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did, and happy reading month. Have a great day. Bye-bye.